On the outside, I must have seemed like many other teenagers out there. Sometimes moody, quietly doing my own thing. I learned not to stand out, to stay below the radar, to blend in with the crowd. Inside, I struggled with experiencing an attraction for others that seemed could only lead to judgment or harm from everybody around me. As a teenager, I felt very low inside in how I valued myself compared to others. I became very cautious in expressing myself, and sometimes I felt like I did not want to live. Unfortunately, gay and lesbian teenagers today experience the same feelings. Tragically, many lives are lost unnecessarily through suicide, and many more lives are blighted by depression, self-harm, bullying, eating disorders, alcohol and substance abuse. This is not hearsay. There's hard evidence of these facts here and in Northern Ireland. There is a wonderful organisation called Belong To. It works with young, gay, lesbian and transgender people around the country. I hope you might support their work by asking yourselves, how do I help my gay family members to know they belong to my family? I finally understood that being homosexual is simply how I was naturally meant to be. Many people mistakenly believe that it is a choice, or that it is something to do with having had bad parents, or that it is the result of sexual abuse. Gay men and women have lived every time in history. They're born into every culture, religious creed, and ethnic group. Parents cannot dictate the sexual orientation of their child any more than they can determine the colour of their eyes or the shape of their nose. Becoming an adult, I was feeling it increasingly difficult to be in a church that had no place for me. When I met a woman who I wanted to spend my life with and realised that the physical expression of our love made us sinners in the eyes of a Catholic doctor, I had to think. How could something that was like the song said, the wind beneath my wings, the realization of my heart's desire, be and sin. And it is ultimately this, the need to be true to who we are. To let our light shine, that ends the fear of being judged or being censored. I heard message after message coming from Rome and from a Catholic hierarchy here in Ireland that seemed to be even more afraid of homosexuals than it was of women. I left the Catholic Church because to remain was like a denial of who I am. Like many gay men and women, I can still feel angry and hurt by the Catholic Church that I was raised in. I remain a Christian and try to live as good a life as I can. The kind of Catholic Church that I would like to see is represented in spirit here today. It is a church that would release gays and lesbians from being judged as sinners for having sexual relationships and would warmly welcome them, their partners and their families. Among the attendants here today, I'd like to acknowledge the gay men and women who are present, and also members of Dundalk Outcomers, which is a local support group for gay, lesbian, bisexual, and transgendered people and their families. Yes, things are better today, largely because of the equality legislation called for by the gay community and its allies, who have rightly demanded to be treated as equal citizens. There is nothing more important than legal protection against discrimination. Through the provision of civil partnership, our families can celebrate our unions with us. You may have been to some of these celebrations and been surprised to see that they are not that different from your average wedding. We have new types of families around us. Lesbian mothers and gay fathers. I sincerely hope that you will reach out to them and welcome them into your midst. And I hope if there are any of you here today that you 
know your own worth and that you know you belong. We would like to thank you very much for coming and listening to us today. And we'd also like to thank both Michael and the Redemptors for standing beside us and becoming allies.
letter to Julia Will in heroic ways. By your grace, he lived his brief life in intense love for you and for those in need. Hear his prayers now for us and for all who are souls in trouble. St. Gerard, friend of sinners, friend of the poor, friend of mothers and children, it is our joy and consolation to come to your novena to remember the goodness of your life, your burning sense of God, your tender love for our Lord and his mother Mary, your kindness and care for everyone in need. Pray for us now in our time of need. Pray for us in our sickness. Pray for us in our confusion and despair. Pray for us in our struggle with life and its mysteries. Remember especially those who love our children and mothers about to give birth. Remember those who have wandered from the practice of the faith and need the grace of reconciliation. Remember all of us who are sinners in our particular needs. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Lord, hear my prayer. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Lord, be merciful to those you love who are sick and in distress. Ease their bodily suffering and refresh their souls so that they may grow strong in themselves and come to a new sense of well-being. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. May our Lord Jesus Christ lay his hands upon you. May his love and peace fill your heart and soul. May his healing power flow into every corner of your being to make you well in yourself and strong, to ease your aches and pains, to give you peace of mind and courage of heart and patience in your trials. May he go before you to lead you, be behind you to guard you, and be always at your side to support you. And may Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you and keep you safe from all harm. And the blessing of the relic of St. Jared. Through the intercession of St. Jared, which I have made to God, send his blessing upon each and every one of you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's join in singing.